hello everyone good afternoon welcome back to my youtube channel thank you again for tuning into this channel so i'm all um enthusiastic to bring you another uh, teaching material for my home health aides and cna sisters out there that are trying to pass the state board exam so again if you like these types of content and these types of material please consider um subscribing to my youtube channel please like and share these video and please drop your comments below let me know what you would like me to provide you with next so today's video i am going to be um discussing about the cna skill feeding feeding a resident that's a very common skill that is used in the state board they give a lot of students that skill that i get feedback all the time that professor they give us uh, feeding a resident and so on and so forth so i just want to walk you through some of the um various um points that you need to hit on in order to um pass the cna skill so we are doing feeding if you like these types of content please consider like share subscribe to turn on your bell notifications thank you first before you even start doing anything, when you go in there to do your skill, you always have to wash your hands. And you were taught that. You were taught that in CNA school. You were taught that in home health aid school. You were taught that in RN or LPN school. You always wash your hands first. After you finish washing your hands with soap and water, the next thing you want to do is to greet the resident by his or her name. And introduce yourself let them know exactly what's your name second you want to provide the resident with explanation about care before beginning and doing care just don't go there and start feeding them no we don't do that you tell them exactly what you're going to do that miss so-and-so mrs. Johnson mr. Smith whatever is their name I'm here to feed you your lunch breakfast or dinner you explain to them so that way they know exactly what you are getting ready to do so that will decrease their anxiety and their fear and they're more likely to be cooperative with you the third component is that you assist the resident to a sitting position an upright position 90 degree before feeding and we know that why what is the rational for that we know is that having the patient in the upright position propped up that will prevent aspiration so you must have them in an upright position before you start any type of feeding make sure they're not in a slot slunge position make sure they're upright the four component assist the resident to wash their hands before feeding by using a damp washcloth or paper towel. If they're able to wash their hands, yes, so be it. If they're not able, you have to assist them by giving them a washcloth, a damp washcloth for their hands or a paper towel to wash their hands. Make sure you wash their hands before you start feeding them you as the cna you have to sit while feeding the resident i see a lot of times in the nursing home they're standing they're slouching backwards feeding a resident no we don't do that you sit upright you sit at face at face to face with the patient you must have at uh, eye level you see how this cna is feeding her resident that's how you have to be Offer to protect the resident clothing with a barrier before feeding and remove barrier at the end of feeding. Now, they used to call it a bib back in the days. Now they call it a clothes protector. Make sure you provide a clothes protector for them so you can protect their clothing. Those are key elements in the slide that you need to integrate in order to be successful with the uh, CNA skill let's move on to the other slide so the seventh element is that use a spoon to feed them eight offer fluids to drink throughout feeding at least every two to three bites of food 
So you feed them very slowly, you offer them uh, fluids to drink after every two or three b bites, you know, you check their mouth for any type of pocketing, make sure they're not holding food in their mouth. So the ninth com component is allow the resident opportunity to swallow before feeding the next bite. So give them time, feed them slowly, give them time to chew their food. Don't rush them. I see in the nursing home, a lot of times I see the staffs are rushing the resident. They, you know, you're there to work. So you have to give the resident time to swallow the food. You, you don't want them to choke and aspirate on a piece of uh, food particles. So give them enough time to swallow their food. The 10 component is to converse with the resident during meal to encourage intake. So encourage them to eat, ask them how they like the meal. Do they prefer something else? How is it tasty? How is it? The 11 component is leave the area around the resident's mouth clean and dry when care is completed. So just don't walk away when you finish feeding them. You have to take a damn cloth and you have to wipe around their mouth. Leave it clean and dry. The 12th component is to complete the scale by placing used linens in a hamper and disposing of trash and clean over bed table. So the bib that you took out, you have to put, dispose it in the, um, in the hamper. All the washcloths and everything that is sold, you have to dispose that into the hamper. Just don't leave it around there. The 13th element is record food intake and fluid on the intake form. So now your proctor is going to give you a, um, a intake form and you have to um, record the food um, intake on that intake form. So let's say your patient eat the entire plate of food, solid food, that's 100%. If they eat half of that, that's how much? 50%, so that's how you document it. You were also taught how to calculate their fluid intake. So now if they had a cup of apple juice, which is an eight ounce of um, cup, of apple juice and they only drank half of that how much would you put on the intake form you're not just gonna put half a cup half a cup is equal to four ounces because the whole cup is eight ounces so the half of the cup will be equal to four ounces so you have to calculate one ounce is equal to 30 ml so you have to calculate 30 multiply by how much? 30 multiply by 4. 4 times 3 is what? 12. So that will be 120 mLs or 120 cc's they had consumed. That's how you document that on the intake form. Let's look at the other slide. So the last slide, ask the resident about preference during care. You need to do that. How is it going? Do you like the meal? Do you like me to order something else? Use, a, use standard precautions such as washing your hands. That's important. Ask the resident about comfort during care. How do you ask them about comfort during care? Um, are they experiencing any pain? any discomfort, communicate with them. Um, promoting safety, that's very, very important. How do you, as a home health aide or a CNA, promote safety? You promote safety when you're leaving the resident, make sure you give them their call bell in their hands or leave it within close reach and instruct them to call you if they need help when you leaving their bedside and the patient is in bed you promote safety by leaving the bed in the lowest position and leave their personal belongings their water pitcher and all their personal belongings within close reach that's how you um, promote um, safety for the resident so guys these are some key elements in the um, skill of feeding a resident 
and if you integrate these um skills into your daily um routine as a cna or when you're going to take the state board i can guarantee you that you will pass the state board exam by integrating these key elements into your um by doing the skill thank you so much for watching thank you again for tuning into my channel and um if you like more of these videos please drop your comments below please like and share and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you for watching please subscribe goodbye